Mr. Griffin, I can hear you.
Managed participant, it says. Okay. And then it says, Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, finally, finally, we got somebody that can hear me. Yeah. Uh, who is that? Mohammed, Mohammed Khan. Mohammed, hello, Mohammed. Thank you for speaking up. Uh, how about some of these other, other wonderful students? How about Adam, my interpreter? Adam, can you hear me? No, I don't think so. And and you're coming in awfully faint, Mohammed. Mm-hmm. Okay. So early. Uh, we're, we're six <laughs> minutes early. We're okay. I guess Adam can hear you now. Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. It seems blurrier than it has been in the past. Uh, I don't know if you've changed microphones or something. I changed computers. My camera went out on my other computer. Okay, so um, I can hear you as if um, sometimes your your computer is underwater or something. Uh, it it gets real blurry and then comes back. Well, here, let me let me unplug this uh, external microphone and see see if the computer microphone works better. Here we go, Adam. I'm unplugging now. Okay, Earth calling Adam. Earth calling Adam. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, but when you lean back, it's like yeah. the microphone decides you're not there anymore. How about right here? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be working now. Well, wait a minute. Now, I, I, when I lean forward, you can't hear me? Now I can hear you in all positions. A while ago, it was coming in and out rather dramatically. Okay. We're using my grandson's computer, and <laughs> we're, we're, use, we're using his computer's microphone, but you can hear me. What about the board? Can you read that stuff on the board? Yeah. Yeah, we can see the board. The microphone did that again. I, I don't know what what's causing that to sometimes come in and out. So be aware uh -oh. that that's happening. Oh, gee. So there's some, something about the microphone that's not right. Yeah. You know what you might try is if you go into the, the sound settings, yeah. it may be that the automatic adjustment thing is on, and you might just uncheck that and and turn the microphone all the way up. Because it could be automatically adjusting your mic volume. How do I go to the sounds adjustment thing? The little windows thing at the far left hand? Well, no, no, it, where, the, where you click to mute the microphone, Yeah. right next to that, there should be an arrow. And if you- Yeah, I see the that, arrow. Yep, and so if you go to, um, I clicked yeah. on that. It says audio settings. Yep. Yeah, I click on that. Click on the audio settings. And uh, one and of the settings says automatically adjust volume under microphone. You might uncheck that and then slide the slider all the way over. Okay, here, let me slide this over. I'm sliding the volume way over. Okay. Yeah, for the microphone, and it should have a check underneath it saying automatically adjust volume. Uncheck it. Uh, uncheck it. Uh, I uncheck it. Is it doesn't say? Whoops. Automatically yeah, adjust. Yeah. So you want to uncheck that okay. automatically adjust. We want to uncheck. <laughs> okay. Now how's that? <laughs> hmm. That better? Be honest, it's about the same. <laughs> oh, it's about the same. <laughs> well, I got my. Uh, 10-year-old grandson here, he's running the thing now. 
G Gabriel, uh, just get out of there and we'll, I'll start my uh, class. Wait, how is the sound right now? It sounds fine right now, but it seems like it'll, it slowly goes down and then comes back up. So the volume will like. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Well, okay. what if we tried it without the mic? Oh, you already tried I, it. I unplugged this and we're using this. They, yeah. we, should we try the mic on the mic? Was it not working on the mic? I don't know. Well, plug that in and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it, it's not, yeah, it's, um, yeah. Uh, so I assume the problem is that you're using Zoom software, some kind of software that's trying to detect when there's voices and when there's not voices. And I've run into this problem before with other video chat settings. Um, if you don't use a mic, then you're going to run into issues where it's going to automatically make you lower sometimes where you, people can't hear you. Okay, plugging in the uh, external microphone. And that, now we're on the external microphone. And what do you think? Uh, keep talking for a while. You sound fine right now. Okay, testing one, two, three. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Uh, how am I doing? Uh, I think it sounds fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yay! Okay, well, why don't we go ahead with our class? Uh, let me see who's in here now. We are going to manage participants. Oh, we got a big class. Look at all these wonderful students. Tyler, Zach, Mohammed, Mark, Levi, Kristen, Jeff, Ben, Mohammed, Logan, Chris, Adam. All right, well, let's let's do our class, shall we? Here we go. Yep. Uh, I'm going to have to write real dark, though, for you to read this book. It's so dang faint. I tried to write physics two there, but it just sort of came out. Can can you guys read that? It says physics two. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You can read it. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's what we're talking about. Physics two. AC circuits. Uh, okay. And. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about average current, average voltage, and average power for a minute. See, uh, I wonder if this will come out. I'm going to make a, a, a current now, and I'm going to make a sinusoidal current. And you guys all know what sinusoids look like. Yeah, there you go. You know what the average current is? The average, zero. it's zero. That's right, because half the time it's above the line and half the time it's below the line, so the average current is zero. Now, if you had a resistor, if you're talking about a resistor, then the voltage would just follow along like this. The voltage. Bye, little buddy. Thanks for helping me with the. Uh... Uh, do you have a different marker that's a little bit darker? Just having some trouble reading it. Yeah, let me try different markers. Hang on. Uh, I need a big, thick, honking marker. Uh, let's see if this is any better. Probably not. But if I go over it, Twice, and I see that's the voltage there. This one is the current. We we plotted the current, but but the voltage is just going to mimic the current. How about that? Can can Jeff see that now? I hope. Uh, I'll ask him. Yeah, ask him. I'll try to go over stuff twice, I guess. I don't know what else to do. I'll keep trying different markers. I need a big, thick marker. But 
see the average voltage. Hey, that's better. Look, hey, look at this one. I think I found something good here. The average yep, sounds much clearer. Oh uh, yeah, the average voltage is zero. The average current is zero. But now we're going to talk about the average power. Now, the average power, well, first, first of all, we're going to talk about what they call instantaneous power. That th this is instantaneous. And you know what that is? That's current times voltage. It's current times voltage. And see, these are both positive. So the instantaneous power will give you a, a positive. These are both negative. The current times the voltage, they're both negative. So that'll give you a positive. It turns out the instantaneous power looks like this. Wish I had some different colors. This is this is the graph of the instantaneous power. And notice it's all positive. It's all positive. In fact, uh, if you squared the current, that's what you'd get. But the average, the average power, and you see that the average power is right down the middle. Mm -hmm. It's right down the middle. That, that's your average power. The instantaneous power goes up and down, but it's all positive. And so the average power is equal to, uh, well, it would be equal to one half of the this is better explained in your book let, let me do it this way there's the uh, what i'm trying to show you guys is the root mean square business the the, the root mean square current is uh, it's the root of the mean of the squares of the current. So you take the, the squares of the current and you find the mean of it. And then you take the root, you take the root of the mean of the squares. And uh, what you'll get, what you'll get is, uh, I'm not explaining this worth a darn. Let, let me talk about root mean square, and then we'll get back to that. All, all voltages and currents in AC are root mean square. Like, for instance, I'm going to try to explain this better. When, if, if you took a voltmeter and you measured the, uh, the volts, on a resistor with your voltmeter. Ooh, that writes nice and thick. If you took your voltmeter and connected it to the to a resistor that had current in it and voltage, it's a, we're talking about an AC voltmeter. What you'll be reading is the root mean square of voltage. And if, if you were to take a voltmeter and just stick it into your wall socket, let's do that. Go to your wall socket. You know, there's, there's two uh, plugs there, and you just connect it to the two plugs. There you go. This is kind of dangerous. Do not do this at home. But, but take, <laughs> take your leads on your AC voltmeter, and you know what? It'll say 110 It'll say 110 volts. That's what you have in, in your wall socket. Okay. Now, what you really have 
you have a, a voltage that's doing this. It's a sinusoidal voltage, and it's going up to uh, uh, the square root of 2 times 110. Let me see what that is, just a minute. Square root of 2. 0 0.7071. Yeah. Uh, did you say 155? What did you say no, again? I just said the square root value is 0 0.7071. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't multiply with 110. Uh -huh. Yeah, now when you multiply the square root times 110, you get 155.6. Yes. Yes, this, this voltage is going up to plus 155.6, and it's going down to minus 155.6. Uh, where did you get the square root of two from? <laughs> uh, let me show you where I got that. If if you take the uh, if you take the voltage, mm -hmm. and it's it's changing all the time. It's a sinusoid. The the voltage is actually uh, one hundred and fifty rounded up to six sine of 377t what that mm -hmm. is is what that is is omega is 2 pi f and f is 50 hertz and so that if you'll do that mm -hmm. you'll get i think you'll get 377 won't you let's see i believe so yeah and <clears throat> but see when if you want the uh if you want the voltage squared that will give you something like this here. That's actually just 100 times pi, so it would be 314. Uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Just a second. Let's do this right. Uh, omega is 2 pi f. Mm -hmm. and, and f is, uh, no, it's not 50, it's 60. I'm it sorry. 60. Yeah. If okay. It's 60, then it is yeah. 377. You get 377. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's okay. your yep. omega. It's radians per second is what it is. And <clears throat> all right, now where was I? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, but but see, the average is right here. The average is right here. Now. The sign goes up and down uh, from plus one to minus one. And so when you square it, it goes up. What this is is the V max. That's right there, that's V max, which is, I think, 155. But what, what I'm trying to tell you is that the average. The average voltage is one half of V max. Yeah, that's Wait, aren't you aren't you talking about power now? Uh, well, well, actually, I'm talking about voltage right now. But power would be uh, power would be the same. Let's talk about power. Because I thought that earlier you said that V the V average was zero. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is zero. But see, power is um, uh, V squared over R. Yep. And when you square it, you, you don't get zero. Yep. And so what this is, is V max. This is V max. It'll be one half. Uh, it'll be one half of V max over R. One half of V max over R. And what they decided to do is call this um, I RMS V RMS over um, V squared over R. Here we go. So you got one half. I'm going to try to show you where the square root of two jazz comes from. You can ca cancel those R's out. You know the formula 
for power, and we use it many times before, is V squared over R. Mm -hmm. V squared over R. Well, if you get rid of the R's, I need some room here, and solve this for what we're going to call, you could call that the average, but they don't. They call it the RMS. And when you take the square root of that, you'll have the square root of one half. Oops, I forgot to square that times V max. And that gives you uh, 0 0.7071 uh, V max. Or the other way of looking at it is V max is uh, the square root of two times the RMS or the average power. And see this, this here is the 110, 110 volts. And if you take that times the square root of two, that, that's what I was doing here. That, that'll give you the maximum voltage. Your voltage actually goes up to 155 and down to minus 155. But the average voltage, uh, when you square it, the squares, see what this really is, it's the average of the, it's the average of the squares, take the average and take the square root of it. Square the voltages and what you'll get is a, is a sinusoid, but it'll look like that. And the average of it is one half Read, read, read your book. And the same, the same thing is true of the current. It, it's called an RMS current, root mean square. See, when you square the current, you, you don't get, you don't get zero. Okay, well, let's, uh, let me go back. Maybe you didn't understand that. Maybe I didn't explain it worth a darn. Now I want to talk about, if I can find my eraser, dang it, just a minute. I want to, let me use this one that I have. Here it is. I had to use my uh, grandson's computer. We're, we're on our, my grandson's computer is what we're on right now. Now, the last time we were together, I was telling you about uh, capacitors and inductors. And I, and I told you that in a capacitor, the current leads the voltage. The current leads the voltage. I wonder if you can read that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, barely. Now in an inductor, the, the voltage leads the current. In an inductor, the voltage leads, I think we got this far uh, last time. Now, let me, let me draw you a picture of that. Let's say, uh, Let's say your current was like this. It's a sinusoidal current. Okay, there it is. Sinusoidal current. Now in the capacitor, let's say that's the current. There it is. There's the current. Now let's talk about the, uh, the voltage in the capacitor. Well, the current leads the voltage in the capacitor. So, uh, the voltage in the capacitor looks like this. Now this is the voltage in the capacitor. Voltage in the capacitor. Voltage in the voltage in the capacitor. See the current's leading it. The current peaks out here, but 
but the voltage in the capacitor doesn't peak out till later. Gosh, can you guys see that? It's awfully faint. Yeah. Good. See, the, the current leads the voltage in a capacitor. Current leads the voltage. ICE. It's Eli the Iceman, is, a, is the way we always learned it. So there's the voltage in the capacitor. Now, the voltage leads the current in an inductor. So the way that works is the volt, here we go. <laughs> this is not easy to do. It's starting to get messy. Uh, wait a minute, goes, goes. Okay, now just a second. I'm getting, I'm getting fouled up here now. Uh, no, I, th I think that's about right. There we go. Now this is so confusing, but this is the uh, voltage in the inductor. Here I'll mark it. This is the voltage in the inductor. Voltage in the inductor. Voltage in the inductor. What you wind up having is um, the voltage in the inductor turns out to be a cosine, and the voltage in the capacitor is a negative cosine, and the current in the uh, in your circuit is a uh, a sine. It's a sinusoid. Here, I'll write them for you. The current is some maximum current times a sign. You can see it there. See, that's a sign. That's a sign curve, isn't it? Now, the voltage in the uh, inductor, it's some maximum voltage times the cosine. I don't know if this, I didn't do that great a job of drawing a cosine curve, but I, I tried. You know, there you go. That's a, co that's a cosine curve. Okay, now the voltage in the uh, uh, capacitor, that's this guy here, that's a negative cosine. Now all this is in your book and it may not make a whole lot of sense, but they've, they've come out with these uh, phasers that are so simple and a lot easier to understand. So let me draw that for you. Mr. Griffin. Yeah. Yes. What is after sine and cosine? I, I can't that, read what that is. It's an omega t. Okay, but, thank you. Thank you for asking. Now I'm going to write the, the uh, phasor representative of, of these equations. Now this one would be uh, like this. There's your current. And now, see, this one would be like this. There's your uh, vo voltage on your inductor. Uh, you can put a little i here if you want. And this one would be this. These might be different lengths. This one be, would be the voltage on the capacitor. And they're 180 degrees out of phase. The voltage on the inductor and the voltage on the capacitor at any moment are 180 degrees out of phase. Now, if you wanted the voltage on the resistor, you know it's in phase with the current. So you could say the voltage on the resistor is like that. Now, this is called, these are called the, the phasor diagram that represents this. Now, isn't this simpler to look at than that? that that's a, but this is a lot simpler. And here's the trick. These, these are spinning around and around in a circle with an angular velocity of omega. And in our case, it's uh, if you were measuring voltage in, in your wall socket, it's 377 radians per second that it's spinning. That's pretty dang fast. It's omega is 2 pi times 60. See, it's, it's spinning around 60 times a second. See, 1001, 1002, every time I do that, it's spun 
60 times. So it's, it's spinning very fast. And this is, these are called phasers. Okay. Now, knowing all of this, knowing a little bit about the root mean square, we're going to work some problems. Maybe I didn't explain that that great. But uh, was it, this, is the subscript of that second V because you have I and then you have two Vs? A, um, where you have the sine and cosine? I have a VL and a VC and a VR. Okay, yep, VL. Okay. That's, a, that's in the resistor. Okay, now here, let's, let's work a few problems. Here we go. And I'll give you some homework. Bless you, students, for bearing with me. Let's see. <laughs> my, my, computer, uh, well, my computer camera went out on me this morning. Did, didn't it? Can you actually unplug and replug your microphone? You just went quiet. Oh, really? I, I just went quiet. No. Back again, but yeah, it's fading out <laughs> and then coming back in. Oh, gee, that's nuts. All right, try that. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're going to work a problem now. Hopefully we understand all that. AC circuits. Today is Monday, April the 27th. And here's here's our circuit. Okay, now what, what we're gonna have is uh, We're going to have 500 ohms, 400 millihenries, and 4. Point. We're just going to work some problems. Microfarads. Now we have an AC circuit, and It's got uh, well. This is a problem I took out of a, a book. Uh, they didn't tell you what what the voltage was. They asked you to find it. They want you to find this. They want you to find the maximum. Find the maximum voltage. <clears throat> But they did give you the maximum current. They said the maximum current is uh, 0.250. So here's a problem. Uh, and the, f the way you work these problems is you solve the uh, uh, impedance diagram. Now we're going to make an impedance diagram. Here we go. We, I just made one, but <clears throat> and do they, t uh, yeah, here we go. This, this particular problem they also gave us the frequency. This must be in Europe. It's 50 hertz. It's not 60 like it is in the United States. So we're going to get the uh, XL. It's got a fancy name. And I talked to you about that last Wednesday. It's called the uh, inductive reactance. And it's omega L. Now, if F is 50, Omega is 2 pi f, so it's 2 pi 50, and L is 400 millihenries. So we're going to get the inductive reactants. They, they call that inductive reactants. All right, we're going to do that now. And here goes. So 
Okay, well, that's 100 pi. I can do that. Times 0.4. Well, I got XL is uh, 1.2576. Ohms. I wonder if I did that right. Now that that's not right. So I'm getting. I got 125. I yeah, did, that's what I got. You got. You guys are right, and I am wrong. Uh, let me try again. 100 times pi times 0.4. That's more like it. <laughs> it's a it's 125 point, I don't know, round it off to seven ohms. There you go. And now we're going to get the uh, capacitive reactants. And here, here's the form. Now, we developed these last Wednesday. And so that'll be one over, uh, well, it's 100 pi, right? Uh, 2 pi times 50 is 100 pi times uh, 4.43 microfarads. Okay, here goes. This is called the capacitive reactance. That's the fancy name for it. Okay, I'm going to do that. Pi. And then what do you do? Times 4.43 e to the minus 6. But then, see, so you have to take the reciprocal. Did you get 718.5 ohms? Yes, sir. Yay! Now we're going to make the uh, impedance diagram. There's a little room over here. Now, now the, uh, the resistance is 500, so we'll go over here. Uh, the resistance is 500. And now the uh, inductive reactance is 125. Well, that's pretty small. It's 125.7. Resistance is 500. Now the capacitive reactance is 718. Gee, it's pretty long. Uh, capacitive reactance is 718.5. This is called the impedance diagram. And from that, you can get what they call the impedance. Now, what you have to do is the, you have to subtract these. Remember the, uh, the currents uh, are, are, are the voltages in the inductor and capacitor were 180 degrees out of phase. So you can get voltages from this. If you, if you multiply this by the current, they all have the same current. At any given instant, the current is the same. And you multiply this by the current, and you multiply that by the current, you would get the voltages. And that would be the voltage on the inductor. And see, it's, it's out of phase. It's 180 degrees out of phase. If you multiplied all these by the current, you'd get the voltages. Okay, so what we're going to do, but well, we're doing the impedance diagram. This is called the impedance diagram. We are making the impedance diagram. You've got to subtract 125 from 718.5. Let me do that. Is XL always on top and XC always on bottom? Yes. Now, let me tell you why that is. See, when you subtract those, what you'll get is a vector here that is uh, 
590, I'll write it over here, 592.8. Now what that is is, is um, XL minus XC. It's really minus 592.8. I'm going to tell you why it's always that way in just a second. Now here comes the impedance. It, these add like vectors. You've got this vector here, this vector here. This, this is the impedance. And what it is, is the square root of 500 squared plus, well, I know it's minus, but when you square it, 592.8 squared minus times a minus, it still gives you a plus. Okay, well, let me do that. Here it goes. Uh, square that plus 500 squared. We'll do some more like this so you get the hang of it. Uh, did you get an impedance of 775.5 ohms? Yes. Yay! Now with that, you can get the current in the circuit. The current in the circuit, and now you got to understand this is the maximum current. It's not the RMS current, it's the maximum current. Will be the maximum voltage divided by the impedance. And we just found the impedance. And in this particular problem that, that I looked up in a book, they said the maximum current is 0 0.250 amps. So supposedly we know that. So you can find the maximum voltage. You just multiply the maximum current times the impedance. And I did that and I got the maximum voltage is 193.89 volts. That's the maximum voltage. And that's what you have here. We have one, what do I say, one, 193, 193.9 sine of 100 pi T. There's your sinusoidal input voltage. That's that is your voltage as a function of time. There's your impedance diagram. And now we can get the voltage on each component. The voltage on this one is going to be, well, the maximum voltage on your resistor will be, <clears throat> it'll be IR. V equals I R. We know that. Gosh, I hope you guys can read that. Do I need to make that darker? Let me turn on this other light. Maybe this other light will help. I don't know. Okay. On this now. V equals IR, here it goes. <clears throat> well, the uh, maximum uh, current is uh, 0.250, oh, right? 0.25 times 500. So I'm getting 125 volts. That's that's the maximum voltage on the resistor. Now let's let's do this one. The voltage on your inductor the maximum voltage on your inductor is IXL. Well, we know XL, it's uh, right here. So you take uh, 0.25 amps times 125.7. The voltage here on this inductor is uh, I'm getting 31.4 something volt. Now, if you want the voltage on the capacitor, 
The way that works is it's equal to the current times xc. Well, we know the current is 0.25, and xc is uh, at the 718, uh, 718. I'm getting 197.6 volts. Now, if, if you add these up, you don't get, uh, you don't get this maximum voltage of 193. See, this is 193. If you add these up, you don't get 193 volts. However, there's a little room up here. However, if you take if you take the 197.6 and subtract the 125, no, not the 125, the uh, 31.4, square it and square the the 125 squared. Take the square root that mark there. Take the square root. Uh, you should get 193. Let's try it. See, see these, these voltages don't add up like in a series circuit. This is an AC circuit. But, but if you take the 197.6, subtract the 31.4, take the square of all that, plus 125 squared, and then take the square root, I'm getting uh, 193.8. Wow. I'm getting the 193.8. That, that, that might not have made a lot of sense. We're going to work another one. We're, going to, we're just going to work one after another until we get the hang of it. But somebody wanted to know, is inductance inductive reactants always up here and the capacitive reactants is down here. Yes, the answer is yes. And here's how you can remember it. I had a student one semester and he said, Mr. Griffin, if you make this C here for uh, uh, let me see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, for the coyote. Yeah, make this C for a coyote. Make the R uh, for rabbit. R is for rabbit. And make the L for lettuce. L is for lettuce. Now, the, the rabbit is going to be chasing the lettuce, and the coyote is going to be chasing the rabbit, and the rabbit chases the le lettuce, and the, the phasers go around and around 60 times a second. That'll help you remember where to put the L for lettuce and the R for rabbit. R is resistance, L is inductance, and C for coyote. Do you, do you like that? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not how my mind works, but if it helps other people, then that's cool. <laughs> if it helps you, good deal. Okay, we're going to work another problem. Here it goes. Uh, Mr. Griffin, I have a question. Yes. So uh, on the voltage of capacitor, did you get 197.6, right? Yes, I did. I'm getting 179.6. Okay, now I, I might have goofed up. You can get a thank you point, Mohammed. Let, let me double check this. Uh, we think that the inductive, the, the, the capacitive reactance is 718.5, right? Yes. Yes. And so, so to get the voltage, you go IX. So th this is the X, 718.5, and the I is 0.25, mm -hmm. and you get 179.6. Yes. This is wrong. It's 179.6. Yes. Uh, big honking thank you point over here for Muhammad. <laughs> that was wrong. Yeah, because I was like, there's something switched around. <laughs> thank, thank you, Muhammad. Okay, now you're welcome. We're do an entirely different problem. Let me erase this one, and we're going to do another one now. If we do enough of these, we'll get the hang of it. Okay. 
And, and I'll give you a homework problem. Let, let me find it, just a moment here. Totally organized. Okay, this one is uh, for homework. I don't want to do it. I want you to do it, and we can talk about it Wednesday. It's 1531 in your book. It's, it's a good problem. You, you can try that. Uh, let me... Uh, Let me see what else I'm doing here, just a minute. Okay, here, here's, a, here's another one. Let's try this one. And this one's also in your book. Uh, maybe we should do it. Okay, now this one is 1528. It's in, it's in your book. So let me, uh, let me find it. We're looking at 1528, uh, yeah, there it is, okay. Uh, I think I do, yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do 1528, it's in your book, it's on page 701 in my book. Uh, 692 for most of ours. <laughs> Thank you. Gee, why is it? Why is it different? That's nuts. Okay. It, yeah, there, there can be different reasons. It might be a different edition. It might be because you have a teacher's copy. It, oh, yeah. okay. It might be because it's a paper copy. Yeah. Okay, you got an RLC series circuit, and I'm going to draw it. Here it goes. Uh, the source is 50, 50 volts, 500 hertz. Okay, here we go. 50. 50 volts, 500 hertz. I wonder if that's showing up, kind of. I'm just having trouble here. Okay. Is that dark enough to where people can read it, I hope? It says, uh, good, 600 ohms. 600 ohms, 30 milli henries, and 0.05 microfarads. Okay, and now they want to know a lot of things, impedance, uh, current, phase angle, we'll, we'll get to all that. First thing we got to do is this XL and XC business. Well, see, XC is one over omega C. Now, what's omega? See, see this is uh, omega is two pi f, two pi f. So omega is. Uh, it's a thousand pi, isn't it? Omega is a thousand pi radians per second. Boy, it's spinning pretty fast. And so our omega C, they call that the capacitive reactance is a thousand pi. So what's the formula for W? It's two pi times what times the frequency? Yes, two pi f. Okay. Now that's an omega. It's, it looks like a W, but it's really an omega. 
Okay, so we, we got that times C, which is 0.05 e to the minus 6. Oh, I did that. And see, see if you get 6366 six, six ohms. See if you do. Yes, I do. Yay, good. Now we're going to get this. Now this is omega L. Now omega is 1,000 pi, so we're, we're going to do that, 1,000 pi. times L, which is actually be 0.03. I'm getting 94. Uh, gosh, that's awfully small, but I can't help it. I'm getting 94.25. Okay, and now we're going to draw our uh, impedance diagram. Here we go. Well, Gee whiz, 6,000? I can't help it, that's what it says. Here comes the impedance diagram. You got 6,366 for XC. XL is only, it's just a tiny amount. I'm sorry, but XL is only 94.25. Now, R is 600, so that's about like this. I think that XL is even smaller, you know, and it's just teeny tiny. This is 600. Okay, that, that's your R. That's the rabbit, that's the lettuce, that's the coyote. Now we're going to get the impedance. Well, you have to subtract that. Let me do that. 63.66 minus 94.25. Okay. And what you have to do is you have to square that, square the 600, and take the square root. All right, let me do that. <clears throat> It's going to give you a uh, an impedance way the heck down here, and it's going to equal this. Let me do that. Um, did you remember to convert the microfarads to farads on the uh, uh, oh, in the oh other no. formula? Oh no! Wait a minute. Maybe I forgot. Uh, let me try that. Okay, hang on. Because I'm getting the same answer. It's just off by three decimal places. Okay, now let me try that. I'm going to take uh, omega, which is 1,000 pi. Yep. And I'm going to multiply by 0 0.05 mm -hmm. e to the minus 6. And then I'm going to take the reciprocal of it. No, that's what I get. Do it. Do yours okay. again. Okay. Okay. Now we're doing this. You have to square that plus six hundred squared. Square root. Okay. Here's what I'm coming up with, guys. I'm coming up with an impedance of sixty-three hundred. That's close enough. We'll just call it 6300. Now, now they have something here called the uh, the phase angle. It's an angle phi, and we can get it. I tell you what it is. It's the arc tangent of this. It's the arc tangent of that 63, blah, blah, minus the 94, blah, blah, divided by the 600. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get the uh, what they call the uh, phase angle. Or, or you could, if you don't like that, you can get it this way. It's the arc. It's the arc cosine of... 600 over 
6,300. You should get the same answer. Let's try it. Here goes. I'm going to try it both ways. 6,300 divided 600. 600 divided by 6,300. Our cosine. I am getting 84.5 degrees. Now we're going to try it this way. Should be the same. Uh, your mic is. Can you unplug and replug it back in? It's starting to fade it, again. I, I uh -oh. think it's because he's away from the microphone. I don't think it has. It, is it better when I'm closer? Yes. Oh, gee. Oh, man. Okay, now uh, hang on. Let me try this. Uh, 6366 minus 9425 divided by 600. Oops. 6366 minus 9425 divided by 600. Arc tangent. Why, why, It's 84.5 degrees either way you do it. You guys understand arc tangents and arc cosines. So they call that the phase angle. That's the fancy name for it. The, the phase angle. What it is, it's, it's the angle that's out of phase between your power source and your current. Your It's the angle between your voltage and your current. See, this right here will give you your voltage. You multiply by I, multiply that as we We can't hear you. Sorry, we can't hear oh. you again. Oh, I'm back in that. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? You're a little warbled. We can't hear you very well. Yeah. Dang. Uh, well, here, let me let me unplug the whole thing and just go with the computers. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'll try to I'll try to talk out of the side of my mouth. Not plug that microphone. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, the voltage is the current times the ohms, and that, that's the total impedance of your circuit. And the phase angle is the angle between the voltage and the current. See, here's the voltage, here's the current. See, the current is always in phase with your resistor. You could put the current along here if you wanted. The current is going to be along here. The voltage is along here. This angle here, well, it's actually negative 84.5. It's negative 80.5. All right. Well, great. That was uh, loads of fun. Now, now let's see how we did. This was, I was going to look up the answer, but they don't give answers. You're just going to have to trust me. That's the right answer. I did it before I checked my answer book. And I got, uh, I got those. Now, what about the maximum current? Let's get that. I don't know if we ever did the maximum current. Let's do it. Here goes. I think they wanted it. See, the maximum current is going to be the maximum voltage. You, you can hear me. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be the maximum voltage divided by the impedance. Well, see, the maximum voltage is 50 volts. It's 50 volts. And the impedance is, uh, where'd it go? Uh, 6,300. 6,300 ohms. And so we can get our maximum current. 50 volts divided by 6,300. I'm getting 7.94 milliampere. Yay, that's, uh, that's what I got before. I think that's correct. All right, before we do another one, let me, uh, let me uh, show you about the average power. I tried to discuss average power. I just need a little room to operate. Did you know that the uh, 
inductor, the average power of the inductor is zero. And, and the reason why it's zero is inductors store energy, but they give it back. They store energy and they give it back 60 times a second. Whatever energy they store in the magnetic fields, they give back the same amount 60 times a second. So the total, the total energy stored or given back when you total them up is zero. That kind of makes sense. Capacitors are the same way. The, the average power of the capacitor is uh, zero because 60 times a second, it stores energy, but then it gives it back. Stored in the electric fields. It stores energy in the electric field, but then it gives it back. You know how that works. But when the current when the current is running into the capacitor and making this positive and charging it up, you're building up your electric field and storing uh, energy in your electric field. There's even a formula for it. You guys remember that. It goes like this. U equals one half CV squared. That, that would be the energy at any given instant in, stored in your capacitor. But then it gives you that energy back when the current goes the other way. So the average power in the inductor is, or the capacitor is zero. Zero average power is zero average power. So if you want the average power for this circuit, it's entirely in the resistor. Let me write that for you and we'll figure it. Here we go. I just need some room. Uh, there's, there's some room up here. Not much. We know what the date is. It's the 27th. Yep. There's a little room right there. The, the, the only, the average power is entirely used by the resistor and it's equal to, but now here, here's the, uh, here's the catch. You have to use the RMS current, and the average power is the RMS current squared. It's not the maximum current, it's the RMS current. I know I didn't explain that very good, but that's what you have to use. Now, here we go, we're gonna get it. Uh, to get the RMS current, here's the maximum current, you have to uh, multiply that by uh, 0.7071. What it is is two, two over the square root of two is what it amounts to. Sir, can you say that again? You got quiet for a moment there. Oh, okay. Uh, what we're going to do is get the RMS current. And, and what it is is uh, it's 0 0.7071 times the 7.94 milliamps. That, that's, we're going to get the, the RMS current and we're going to square it, but first we have to get the RMS current. Here we go. Okay, now you have to multiply that by 0 0.7071 equals, I uh, did something wrong, 7.94 e to the minus 3 times 0 0.7071. Okay, here we go. This is equal to 5.614 times 10 to the minus 3 squared times 600 ohms. Okay, we're going to get our average power. Here it goes. Square that times 600. Well, it's very small. It's 0 0.0189 watts. But now there's another formula for average power. Let me show you that. We'll get the same amount. I just need some room here, dang it. Uh, uh, here, we're going to sacrifice some stuff so I can show you this. 
I would love to show you where this formula comes from, but it goes like this. The average power is equal to the RMS current times the RMS voltage times the cosine. Gosh, can you guys so faint? You can see that? Yeah. Oh, Not very well. Not very well. Maybe make it darker, okay? We're going to make it darker. There's another formula for average power. We're trying to find the average power. Well, uh, the RMS current, we, we did that. It's up here. So, there it is. 5.614, 10 to the minus 3. And the, RM, the root mean square voltage, well, see, this is the maximum voltage. The root mean square voltage is 50 times 0 0.7071 which is 35.36 volts times the cosine of our, what is it, minus something? Minus 85.4, 84.5. Okay, now here, here's the equation for average power. And I'm going to do that. Here it goes. Uh, 5.614 e to the minus 3 times 35.36 times the cosine of that minus 84.5. And here's what I'm getting. For the average power, I'm getting... 0.019 watts. Now, what do we get doing it the other way? Uh, 0.0189. If you round it off, we're in great shape. Well, I don't know if that made a whole lot of sense, but let's try another one. If we do enough of these, we'll get the hang of it. Uh, let me find us another problem just a minute. Which one was that? Uh, that was problem 1528. Uh, let's do this one. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's, we'll do another problem. Here we, here we go. And I gave you some homework. It's still sitting right here. Do we turn that in? No, don't turn it in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, a, I'm adding up all of your homework and quizzes and uh, trying to, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to let everybody know how they're doing on their homework and quizzes. I'm almost there. Okay, we're gonna do this one now, here it goes. Uh, I'm gonna do another problem now. And we need to make one of these uh, imp impedance diagrams. I don't want to erase that thank you point. No, that's too, too valuable there. Uh, this is April 27th, right? Yep. Yes. 27th. Okay, now here's our circuit this time. AC circuit. And this is uh, 60 hertz. That's what we have here in the United States. All of our 
electricity there is 60 hertz. And we're going to have a, a maximum of 150 volts. 150 volts. So, so this, this is like this voltage is 150 sine of, it would amount to 377 T. There's your voltage. Now this is uh, 425 ohms. Hope you can read my writing. Uh, this one is 1.25 Henry's. And this one is 3.5 3.5 microfarads. All right. Now, now what I want you to do, I'm going to shut up for two minutes. I want you to make the uh, impedance diagram. Go ahead and make the impedance diagram. And we'll check it together here in just a minute. I'll be quiet. Uh, go ahead on your mark. Mr. Griffin. Yeah. What, what does that say on the top left? Does that say V equals 150 sine? Yeah. yeah. Little V equals 150 sine of 377T. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to make that diagram now. I'll be quiet for a minute. We've got a really good crowd. We have Trevor and Ross and 
Melissa's here. Logan. Brandon. See, see if you agree with me on some of this. D did you get um, an, a capacitive reactance of? I, I, I got. Did you get seven fifty seven point nine? Yes. Yay! Inductive reactance. Did you get 471.3? Yes, sir. Yes. Yay. Excellent. Okay, now when you draw your uh, diagram, uh, it's going to look like this. See, that's the 471.3. Now, this here is going to be longer. It's going to be, well, it's not quite twice as long, but it's definitely longer. You can measure it if you had, if you had a ruler, you could actually measure that. And then this is 425. That's a tad shorter than 471. So it's going to look like that. Now, now to find the impedance, you got to subtract those, and that will give you. Because uh, see, they're they're 180 degrees out of phase. 757.9 minus 471.3. That's 283. Six. So that puts you right about, uh, I don't know, in here someplace. XL minus XC is 286.6. And then your impedance is going to be right here. Get it? You have to square this, square this, take the square root. Getting five twelve point six for the impedance. We can be lazy and just call it five thirteen. That's good enough. So we've got the impedance now. It's five thirteen, and now we can get the current. Okay, here we go. We're going to get the current now. And now this is going to be the maximum current. The maximum current is going to be the 150 volts. So you see that maximum voltage is 150 volts divided by 513 ohms. All right, here goes. Good. Point two nine three amperes. Yes. <clears throat> Point two nine three amperes. Now, if if you wanted the RMS current, that would be point seven oh seven one times your maximum. Uh, if they asked for the RMS current, it would be 0.207 amperes. If you if you put a AC ammeter on this circuit and measured the current, that's what it would measure. AC meters don't measure maximum, they measure the RMS, they call it, the root mean square current. 
But now let's get the voltage on each one of these components. I want the voltage on the resistor, the voltage on the inductor, and the voltage on the capacitor. I, I will shut up for a tiny minute. You've got a minute or so. And I want you to give me those voltages. Mm -hmm. We couldn't hear you. Thank you. You're going to get those voltages on each one, right? We still can't hear you. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. You, you can hear yep. me now? Good. Yep. When you get those voltages, they won't, they will not add up to 150. So you're, you're inputting 150 and we're getting the voltages. Okay, well, uh, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Well, I wonder if I did these right. Here's what I'm getting. I'm getting 120, 124.5 volts on the resistor. Yes. Yay! I'm getting 133 volts on the inductor. I'm getting 137.8, so it's, it's uh, approximately equal, so it's okay. You, you might be okay. Let, let me try it again. Uh, I'm getting 138. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. I must have pushed the wrong button. I like yours better. Good going. We'll give you a thank you point. 138 volts on the inductor. Now the capacitor, I got 222 volts. Did anybody get 222 volts on the capacitor? Yes. Excellent. And now those are maximum. Those will not be what you would measure with an AC meter. You you're would have out. To, oh, oh, you're back. Back. Uh, if you wanted, if you wanted to know what the RMS voltages were, it's it's pretty easy to do. The the RMS voltage is 0 0.7071 times your maximum voltage. So we could get the RMS voltages, and that's what you would measure with your voltmeter, an AC voltmeter. Okay, so, oh, so we're, okay. Go ahead. I just, could you repeat what you just said you were cutting out? Please. Okay, yeah. If, if you wanted to get your RMS voltage, now remember, that's what you measure with a AC voltmeter. You put an AC voltmeter across this resistor, you will not get 124.5. I tell you what you'll get. You will get 124.5 times 0 0.7071. You get 88 volts. That's 88 volts RMS. 
You put a voltmeter across this resistor, you will read 88 volts, but it's RMS voltage. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's RMS voltage. Now let's get the, uh, the average power. That'll be fun. Here we go. So those 123 and the 136 and the 219, are those the maximum voltages that are going to be on those components? Uh, yeah. The, the 138, that's maximum voltage. The 222, that's maximum voltage. Okay. Those are maximum. You know, the, the sinusoid that goes up and down, up and down, yeah. it goes to a maximum, it goes to a, a bottom there, a negative maximum. But it's not the RMS. Okay, let's get the average power and then, then we'll call it a day on this. Okay, I just need some room to do that. Uh, maybe right in here. here. Here's some room. We're going to get the average power. Now, now remember, the average power of the inductor and the capacitor is zero. Zero. They don't give you any average power. Now, they give you power, but it's instantaneous power. Remember, you store some power, you give it back. So that they have power, but the average power is zero for the capacitor and the inductor. But now, the resistor, if you want the average power of the resistor, you take the RMS and you square it times the resistor. That's it. That's what we used with those uh, light bulbs. Light bulbs. You, you're, you're cutting out again. Uh oh. Oh back, no. Back. Okay. I'm back. It's weird. You keep on fading and then coming back. Oh no. So I don't understand. I'm having so much trouble. We, we we had those light bulbs, and you guys calculated the power when we hooked up those light bulbs. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we had some light bulbs, like a 60 watt and a 40 watt and a 200 watt. Light Mm -hmm. And we put them in series or parallel, and we calculated the power that you would get. And it worked pretty good. When we turned it on, we would predict, oh, that one's going to be real bright, or that one's not going to be real bright. Well, this is how you figure it. You have to use the RMS current. Okay, well, what is the RMS current? And... It's 0.207. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can read that, but it's 0.207 amperes is the RMS current. So we're going to take 0.207, square it, times 425. That's the resistance. Okay, here it goes. 0.207. Times, wait a minute, now you have to square it. Times 425. Did you get average power of 3.77 watts? Average power. 3.77 watts. Uh, uh, no, I'm I got 18.19 18. yep. watts. All right, let, let me do it again. Are probably right. Point two nine three. Uh, no, no, no. Point two oh seven. Oh no, 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 no. Point two oh seven. Maybe that's what I did. Point two oh seven square times yep. four twenty five. Yep. It's eighteen point two. I did something yep. bad, and you guys were right. You guys are so smart. It's eighteen point two watts, isn't it? Yep. yep. Proud of it. Okay, now now you can also get that another way. Let me do it the other way. I need a little room here. Uh, where am I going to put that? Huh? Maybe maybe in here. Uh, not much room. But what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, average power is 
the RMS. It's the RMS current times the RMS voltage times the cosine of your phase angle. Phase angle, let's see, let's get it. Uh, that phase angle is, let me get that, 286.6 divided by 425, the arc tangent. I'm getting 34 degrees. This phase angle is, well, it's really negative 34 degrees. So we know what this is. It's the cosine of negative 34 degrees. And this right here is, uh, well, the RMS current is 207, 0.207. And the RMS voltage, you'd have to multiply 150 by 0.7071. It's 106. Okay, guys, here's the equation for, for average power using that other equation. Let's see if it works. Okay, uh, let's see, 106 times 0 0.207 times the cosine. It's really negative 34, but you get the same answer. I'm getting 18.2 watts. Hey, that's what we got before. 18.2 watts. Yep, just get the same answer. We must have done something right. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Why would we want to do it that way? Why wouldn't we just do it the first way that you showed us squaring the RMS current and multiplying that by the... Um, 0707 thing? No, by the 425. Yeah. Uh, that is a good question. And the answer is you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why, why make it hard? Exactly. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, but, but you have to know about the, uh, the, the capacitors and inductors don't give you any average power. You have to know that. Mm -hmm. They don't because they, they give and they, they take back. They give, they give and they take and it comes out to be zero. Well, guys, that's fun. We had fun time, and uh, we will see you Wednesday. Uh, I think my daughter's going to try to help me here again. Right now, I'm using my grandson's computer. We do the best we can, guys. I don't know what else to do. Uh, there's your homework. Don't turn it in, but we'll discuss it on uh, on Wednesday. And I'm going to say bye bye for now. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See, you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you.